Let's say you have a series of apartments you're looking at. You want to pick the best one. How can you do that? Well, there are three important things in this problem. First, you have to immediately decide on the apartment once you see it. You can't see a bunch of them and then go back and pick the one you like the best. As soon as you see the apartment, you either take it or someone else gets it. Second, you don't know anything about the apartments before you start searching for them. So you have no objective way of picking the best one other than by comparing them against the ones you've already seen. Finally, like many mathematically minded mortals, you want the strategy that gives you the absolute best result the most frequently. For you, it's the best or nothing. So given those three conditions, what's your strategy for getting the best apartment? The optimal strategy is actually pretty straightforward. You start by seeing 37% of the available apartments and are rejecting all of them. You then continue looking at the apartments and take the first apartment that you see that is better than any you have previously seen. If you get to the very last apartment and it turns out the best one was in the first 37%, then you stuck with the last one. It can be shown that this strategy will get you the absolute best result 37% of the time. But here's the interesting part of the question. Why should you look at 37% of the available candidates? Why not look at 25% before making a selection? Or 50%? Well, it turns out 37% isn't a random number. In actuality, the ideal number is around 36.8%, and this value is 1 divided by the constant e. But really, that just pushes the question out a step further. Why does e show up in this problem at all? e frequently is used in problems for continuous growth, such as compound interest, and it doesn't appear to be anything like that here. This type of problem has a name. It's an optimal stopping problem. And this kind of problem has been studied since at least the 1950s. Other names for this specific question are the secretary problem or Google game or the marriage problem. Let's look at a bit of the math for this problem. Let's say there are n available choices. It is pretty obvious that in this case, if you pick an apartment at random, your odds of getting the best apartment are one over n. Additionally, as n gets really large, your odds of getting the best apartment will trend down to zero. But as you look at a few apartments first, you gain information about what is available. The more you sample, the less likely you are to select an apartment that isn't the best by stopping too soon. Unfortunately, there's a trade-off. Because the more you sample, the more likely you are to hit the absolute best in one of your samples and throw it out during your information gathering. It can be shown that for a large number of samples, your probability of selecting the best is a result of this equation. Your probability of selecting the best result is x multiplied by the integral between x and 1 of 1 over t dt. In this equation, x is the percentage of the available samples we look at before trying to select the best one. The best way to think about the 1 over t dt term is that this captures the probability of any given sample being the best of all samples seen so far, i.e. the 10th sample has a 1 in 10 chance of being the best so far. This is important because we will only ever select a sample that is the best we've seen so far. And the answer to the question of why does e appear in this problem is the 1 over t term. The integral of 1 over t is a natural logarithm of t. And of course, the natural logarithm and e are inverse functions of each other. Let's see how that works. The solution to this integral is negative x multiplied by the natural log of x. This tells us the probability of ending up with the best in a series given x. Since x represents what percentage of the series you investigate before trying to pick the best, we can plot this equation for different x's and see what the curve looks like. What it looks like is a curve that humps in the middle and is zero at both ends. This makes sense, because if you don't investigate any apartments before picking one, or you investigate every single apartment, then your odds of picking the best are zero. We can take the derivative of this equation and set it equal to zero and solve for x to see where the absolute maximum is. The derivative is negative natural log x minus one. We simplify this by raising e to the power of both sides. On the left side, the e and natural log are inverse functions and cancel out, leaving just x. On the right hand side, we get e to the negative one power, which is one over e. The result is that the maximum probability occurs at x equals one over e, which is 36.8%. Interestingly enough, if you investigate one over e before picking, the probability that you get the absolute best is also 36.8%. So in this case, 36.8% of the time you get the absolute best. 36.8% of the time the best would be in the first 36.8% and you get stuck with the last apartment. And the other 26.4% you get something better than the first 36.8 but still not quite the absolute best. So this is the best you can do if your goal is that you need the absolute best. But you might be willing to reduce the likelihood of getting the absolute best in order to reduce the chance of getting stuck with the last one in the series. Let's say that you investigate 20% before picking. In that case, you get the absolute best 32.1% of the time, but only get stuck with the last sample 20% of the time. In real life, that's probably a good trade-off. This is Dubious Insights. Thanks for watching.